I remember way back, I think it's Jana Lackman. Yes. And uh, she used to, you used to go to and see her, and she's one of my students, one of the teachers who has been, one of the first teachers actually who started teaching. And, uh, and she uh, finally thought that uh, she could do whatever she could, and that, she, that you needed a little extra help. Well, I remember Jana Lackman, who was a wonderful teacher. Yeah. Uh, I did yoga with her, and um, she left for the summer. And like yeah. you said, she wanted me to be uh, having something a little more, you know, yeah. to go through the, the, the breast cancer journey. So I met with you, and um, right away, uh, you told me to lie on the floor. And you started to give me a little massage and do some breathing techniques. And then yeah. I cried for three hours. I you could do that. nothing. I remember. I that. just cry, 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 yeah. and I came back the next time to start to do some real yoga work, right. and never cried after that. <laughs> Absolutely. I started to take charge of yeah. my health, feeling control over, um, you know, the nausea, the yeah. symptoms of um, chemotherapy, and all that. We all have the same technology available, but we don't pay attention to it. So by mentioning that every cell of the body is participating into the very dance of life. Those feelings give a new perception, a different feeling of how the body is with the finest technology at work every moment, non-stop. So when you begin to pay attention to it, and that's exactly what happened at the, at the, at the, at the time. I remember. That you were paying more attention to. I was paying more attention to my stress and yeah. how to relieve yeah. that stress yeah. by, by allowing the um, the the healing response of relaxation to take place. Yeah. And I started to do a lot of exercise and I felt very good. Yeah. And, uh, and then we decided to uh, go further and do a research on your methodology. Right. And so we founded this project right. on your philosophy of yoga yeah. and uh, of, uh, and it, it took us to where we are today. Yeah. Um, but also I remember it was just a thought that's true. That you thought of, that if this has helped you and helped other women that you were very close to at the time, that if it helped all of you, that why not share this with other women? Yeah, that was going through a desperate exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. Once I knew this was working for me, yeah. my goal was to share this share. with as many women yeah. and men that can have the chance to yeah. feel that joy and that power that they have within themselves. Yeah, but how one idea can expand into such a beautiful way where so many people are not being helped and that resulted into research and that resulted into other things that are happening at the same time. There are two other pro pro projects being launched after the, your project pro has been completed. Yes, there are so many more actually. Many more are actually coming up. In fact, we are going to India. Together. Together. <laughs> This and is there are uh, several conferences that we'll be attending in Rishikesh and Bangalore. Bangalore. We're going to meet some uh, other yeah. uh, yoga teachers, some doctors, some. Um, we're going to meet uh, in hospitals setting to uh, exchange on the research we're doing in Canada and the research they're doing in India, and uh, we're going to make a new partnership now, uh, like uh, bringing That's the. Right. A bridge between the east, east and, and the, the west, west. Yeah. and uh, it's going to be fantastic. So there can be more exchange of research and information that is now easily available. You will leave a legacy of well, uh, of uh, a, a way of uh, tapping into your own inner pharmacy yeah. and uh, right. giving hope to yeah. not only women but also to men and um, the methodology of of you, Dr. Bali, can also be applied. Uh, for example, for children who have hyperactivity. Absolutely. There's a new research uh, that we're going to launch, um, uh, trying to evaluate yeah. the impact of your methodology on uh, reducing attention deficit disorder. Yeah. So lots of avenues are open now. We have to deal with our fears and worries and anxieties which we are loaded with, which is creating an overload in our brain. And the overloaded brain is like an electrical system. There will be a short circuit when there's an overload. Our system is being short-circuited. That's so important, what yeah. Dr. Bali is just saying. Yeah. Uh, so by we should not get to that point where right. everything Absolutely. gets Prevention. too stressful. And the work that I'm doing is also directed towards prevention. 
most of the risk factor that we have for psychosomatic degenerative condition or cancer is preventable as long as we can keep the system in the relaxation response. In the relaxation response, our system, immune system is boosted up. And as long as the si immune system is boosted up, the body knows how to protect itself. It has the finest technology, automated, spontaneous, and simultaneous. How to channel that energy, wellness is a conscious process. So once we are aware of this process, then we can monitor and utilize our own resources in a very healing and a productive way. There can be spontaneous healing and feelings of wellness once we understand the whole principle. Une femme qui est devenue une très bonne copine avec moi, avec qui j'ai fait des projets, m'a référé à un maître gourou, un maître de yoga. Et là, ça a été une autre partie de, de mon voyage à l'intérieur. Là, on appelle ça toute l'approche holistique. Alors, j'ai travaillé beaucoup avec. Il m'a appris à respirer. Il m'a appris à me détendre. Il m'a dit que à l'intérieur de nous, c'est le calme, la sérénité qu'on a en dedans de nous qui fait que on peut guérir. Alors, euh, avec le groupe de femmes, on a créé une fondation qui est devenue grande, une fondation qui s'appelle Sérénité, qui était toute l'approche holistique. Avec euh, les chimions, les, euh, les traitements, tout est endolori. Notre corps, euh, comme mon, mon oncologue chirurgien me disait toujours, c'est pas du 7-Up qu'on donne dans les veines, c'est un cocktail, euh, tu sais, c'est pas du 7-Up. Donc, pour se délier, pour enlever les toxines, au lieu de prendre mille et une, euh, pas vitamines, mais produits naturels, etc., je veux dire, juste de faire l'exercice de yoga, ça nous enlève les toxines. Mais là, c'est qu'à un moment donné, tu commences à entendre les oiseaux. Tu commences à voir le fleuve. Tu commences à voir les arbres que tu n'avais jamais vus avant. The re recent research that we have just finished with the breast cancer women. The premise of this research has been teaching women to create a new perception. Our body is a printout of our own mind. Unless we change our perception, unless we create a sense of trust, if you are into that sense of doubt and fear that my body is not mobilizing itself, and the fear of that this condition is so devastating, it can reoccur. Those feelings have to be dealt with. And what we did to give them a sense of trust, that in spite of, no matter how bad it seemed, this morning, yesterday, last month, last year, to pay attention to the body's infinite intelligence that is ceaselessly at work, working every moment non-stop with a mathematical precision to do what it takes to do. When do we heal most? In deep sleep. Why? Because the mind is not interfering into the process. That's what we try to do, to teach them to calm the mind, to honor and accept whatever the situation and condition they are going through, to accept. That's the first step. And then work with it, rather than fight against it. We need treatment in a situation like that. We need radiotherapy. We need chemotherapy. We need all the technology that is available. But eventually, we have to empower women to feel that they also have inner self-sufficiency. That trust has to be created in their mind. That while they're getting the treatment, then they can tap into their untapped potential.